Hey there and welcome back to the Homemade Haven. Welcome back to our garden for our very last summer garden tour and today I want to show you guys how I am harvesting some of my vegetables to save the seeds to plant and harvest in next year's garden. So we are well into the heat of summer now. This is the first week of August and so things in the spring summer garden are starting to wind down. Things are starting to go to seed. Some of my plants are starting to die off and I've already planted seeds to have ready to plant for my fall garden. So things are starting to look a little sad, a little dry, crispy, not as pretty as they were just a few weeks ago, but we have still been getting some harvest every day, um, but things are definitely slowing down as we get ready for the next season. So in our front bed, we have our herbs that some of them have died and some of them have grown massively like this beautiful basil back here. Our sage has died off and our lavender has died off as well. We've had weeks of solid rain from morning to night, just dumping, flooding rain. And then we've had weeks with absolute miserable sunshine, hot. So we have been hitting about 100 degrees for several days in a row, as I know most of you across the country are. So we are thankful to have had the rain breaks in between, but for some of your more finicky plants and herbs, it's just not a great combination. So we have had some losses, but we do have plenty of other herbs that are still producing and many that are going to seed, such as our basil and our mint. I haven't been so worried about bug pressure because it is the end of the season, so I'm going to be tearing a lot of this stuff out here pretty soon. But one critter that we do let stay on our plants, whether it's the middle of the season or the end of the season, are our butterfly caterpillars. So we have had several rounds of swallowtail that have been residing on our parsley and our dill and because we love the butterflies so much and we have plenty of herbs to spare we let them stay they don't stay very long so what they offer us in return in terms of pollination is worth the little bit that they eat while they're here if you guys are curious about what kind of critters we let stay in our garden and which ones that we absolutely remove from our garden, be sure to head over to our Instagram page where I have been doing a naughty versus nice garden pest edition. You can see some of the, the critters that have been residing in our gardens and some of the ones that we have been picking out and trying to protect our plants from. I'll leave a link to our Instagram page in the description below. All right, so next we have our bean bed. We've got our lima beans and our pole green beans here. We have harvested all of our lima beans one time already and we ended up with, I think it was about a gallon and a half of shelled lima beans. So that's not too bad for, I think we have like 10 plants all together and you really have to have a lot of plants for shelling beans to really add up um, to have enough to preserve. But I had left a couple of pods on the plants to dry out so that we could save for seed for next season. And because I did that, there are several new pods that have came on these bushes. I wasn't thinking that we'd have enough time to grow any more out, but I'm gonna let them grow and we'll just add them to our freezer bag with the rest of the ones from the first harvest. All right, you can see here the difference between a pod that is growing and still needing to mature and one that we have left on here to dry out to save for seed so it gets really dry and brown and you can hear the dried out bean inside of this pod what we're going to do is just pop this open and these dried out beans that are on the inside will be our seeds for next year so after our lima beans, we have our green bean tunnel here, which is actually kind of funny because if you guys watched my plant with me video in the very beginning, we actually planted speckled butter beans for this tunnel and they didn't germinate. So we came back and put our favorite variety of green beans, which are the rattlesnake beans, and they went ahead and took over. Well, the later in the season, I noticed some vines that didn't look like the rattlesnake beans. And then I started seeing some pods that were definitely not green bean pods. So we've had maybe one or two of the speckled butter bean 
vines go ahead and start growing up in there. Um, it's not enough to really use for a full meal, but we'll take them and add them to our lima bean bag and cook them up whenever the time comes. The green beans are starting to slow down just a little bit. This bed was actually planted later than our opposite side green bean tunnel so you'll see the difference whenever we get over there. The first tunnel is really starting to dry up and slow down majorly. Um, this one is still producing quite a bit but you can tell that stuff's starting to slow down a little bit and there are some pods that got overlooked that I just left on the vine to dry out for seed um, but I'll show you exactly what that looks like when we get to the next tunnel. And here on the back side of our green bean tunnel, we have our wildflowers and they have gone wild. In the last video, our sunflowers had not blossomed yet, but as you can see, they've all started blossoming and they look so pretty. We have lots of marigolds and different kinds of flowers down here, some cosmos and some other little pretty things mixed in. So our pollinators are very happy and this is definitely the hot place to be for them during the day. As I was picking some green beans the other day, I noticed that there was a vine that kind of came off of the trellis and I noticed that it has started climbing up our sunflowers, which is really cool. Um, but I can't get to them because they're so high up and the trellis is in the way. I could probably step into the box from this way, but I'm just gonna let them stay and dry out on the sunflower and just save those for seed. Now, when it comes to saving seed from your flowers, it's kind of foolproof. The flower itself holds the seeds. So with your sunflowers, the middle of the pods are going to hold your seeds, not all sunflower seeds are the edible kind. I'm sure you probably could eat these, but they're not the shelled sunflower seeds that you're used to seeing. Now with these smaller flowers, like our marigolds, let me see if I can find a dried one. This one's drying out. It's not quite dry just yet, but all you do is just peel them apart and the petals are your seeds here. It's really best to let them dry out a little bit. They're just better for storage when they're dried out. Um, you don't have to worry about any kind of like mold or anything like that. But you could take these and just lay them out in a single file line and let them go ahead and dry out before you put them in an envelope for next year. If you let them continue to dry on, on the stem itself, they will drop their, their seeds um, and replant so if you don't want this to be a flower bed for the rest of its life you might want to go ahead and remove them as soon as they start drying out so after our wildflowers we had our pumpkin bed which unfortunately i've already removed after we harvested all of our pumpkins we got vine borers inside of the pumpkin vines, which if you remember from my last garden video, there was a vine borer moth that actually landed on the plant during the video, but I think it was too far gone at that point anyways. So we harvested somewhere between 15 to 20 um, small pumpkins. So I'm happy with what we got out of this bed. Do I wish they could have gone on? Yes, because it was really pretty and you can never have too many pumpkins to put up. Um, but we went ahead and tore these vines out, threw them over to the chickens and let them take care of all the grubbies and worms and everything. Um, I've already been planning my fall garden, as I said, so this bed will be put to better use here very shortly. All right, and our last two beds here on this side of the garden, we have our okra and our cucumber tunnel and more okra on the back side back there. The okra is starting to really boom now that it's really hot. I've just came through here and really pruned it up to where I can see through. If you've ever grown okra, you know how well it blends in. And once it gets past a certain size, it's really not edible anymore. So I cleaned a lot of the leaves up to where I can see exactly where the pods are growing so that I won't miss any while they're at a good size for picking. I do have a few pods that got overgrown um, that I am drying out and I'm gonna save the seeds from that. I just have them on a windowsill and I just keep rotating it each day so that it can dry out completely. And once it's good and dry and when I shake it, it kind of sounds like a rattle, then I know the seeds are ready to come out and save for next year. Now, as for our cucumber tunnel, it looks super sad, I know. 
It has been dying off for several weeks now. Once we had our fill of cucumbers and have filled the pantry with pickles, I knew that it was time to let some of these start growing for seed for next year. And once you let cucumbers get fully grown on the vine, your vines will die off. That's the end of their life. So we really kept this up because we had that bird's nest that was up here at the top I was telling you guys about. The birds literally just flew the nest yesterday. So we are at the point where I can go ahead and harvest my seed cucumbers and we can tear these vines down. Probably gonna burn them because they, they're full of cucumber beetles and squash bugs and all their eggs. Um, and then we'll go ahead and prepare this space for our fall garden. So as I was saying, you let your cucumbers become fully mature on the vine and you want them to start drying out and turning like a brown, yellowy color. You'll know when they're full grown. And you guys, check out the size of this Japanese long cucumber. What in the world? This is as long as my leg and it probably weighs about five pounds. So this was one that I left on for seed. I think we're gonna get plenty of seeds out of this one, but just in case I let two grow and go to seed, so I'm gonna go harvest that one as well. Check it out, another big giant one. And I've also saved some of our Punakira cucumbers. These were the small white flesh cucumbers. They turn this dark brown and supposedly once they get to this size, the flesh is still sweet and full of water. Um, I've never tried them. I might try one just to see if that theory is true. I don't see any wormholes on this one, so this might be a good one to try. But um, I was not thrilled with this variety this year. We had several bitter ones and they're not supposed to be bitter. So um, I'm probably only gonna harvest seed from one of these and just keep it on the back burner. I was very pleased with our long cucumbers this year. Um, there was none that was bitter and they grew very prolifically. So I might just stick to these next year, maybe one plant or two, because like I said, we have plenty of pickles and we really don't need a lot of pickles next year. So that's kind of the plan for our cucumbers going forward. I'll show you guys how to save the cucumber seed and a few of our other seed when we get inside and I can show you exactly what that looks like. All right, so are you guys ready for this? I'm gonna show you the other side of the garden, but we have a huge, reveal to show you. Remember how we could not plant our very last boxes at the, the back of our garden because we wanted to get some tree work done first? Well, we have had some tree work done. Check it out. We're so excited to finally have this work done. We had the first half of this portion of the woods completely cleared so that we can put our barn shop over in line with our driveway. And then we will have space for our orchard and our berry patches and expanding the garden over just a little bit more. And then the back half where you see some of these thinned out trees is gonna be our pasture for our animals. We're so excited, we're one step closer. So that should all be unfolding over the next year. And I'm hoping that by next fall, we'll have our livestock out here enjoying the land with us. All right, so our bed on this side, our sweet potatoes, you can see they're still growing wild and beautiful. They are not quite ready to harvest yet and probably still won't be for a few more weeks. Usually whenever I plant around the time of year that I planted these, which was the end of May-ish, they are ready by the end of September. So I'm gonna keep an eye on them. We'll know they're ready to pick once the vines start yellowing a little bit more, but they are just gonna sit tight for a little while longer. Then our next bed was our watermelon bed, which is another wild and crazy overflowing bed. We finally harvested our first few watermelons. I think we've gotten four watermelons off of this now, and they have been 
phenomenal. So good. I've been so happy, so proud. This is the first year that I've grown edible watermelons. I have tried to grow watermelons for several years, but either picked them too soon or the bugs got to them or the rain bursted them or just some sort of reason why we could not have edible watermelons. But this year we timed it just right. We've kept the bugs off of them and we've had some delicious watermelons. Most of them have averaged around 20 pounds. So they're, they're big giant guys and they have been so delicious and so sweet. So we have definitely kept the seeds from these harvests and all you have to do with watermelon seeds is literally just pop them out, rinse them off, dry them, and, and you have seeds for next year. We still have a handful of watermelons growing on these vines. I'm hoping that the bug pressure isn't gonna cause them to die off before they're done maturing, but we'll see. Next we have our tomato bed here. I told you guys that this trellis system did not work as we wanted it to but it hasn't failed completely it's still holding things up it is a big jungle of mess in there which is mostly cherry tomatoes our slicing tomatoes did not do great this year um, i think some of them got diseased early on so we've only gotten a handful of slicing tomatoes off um, our paste tomatoes have done okay. We've put about two gallons of paste tomatoes up in the freezer, which I plan on turning into some kind of sauce here soon. And we have had buckets and buckets of cherry tomatoes. Um, so we've been eating them by the handful and also freezing so that we can just put all of them into a sauce together. Tomato seeds are very easy to save. I actually made a short video. You can go back and watch to see how easy it is to save tomato seeds, but it's literally just scoop them out, put them on a napkin, remove any of the little bits of tomato off of them, and once they're good and dried, put them in your seed storage and you're ready to go for next year. Over to our other green bean tunnel here. We have our borage and our cinnamon basil that are growing on the backside that look good and healthy. So we're just gonna let them continue to grow. As I mentioned, our green bean tunnel is starting to die off a little bit. You can see a lot of the yellowing and browning and the vines themselves are starting to harden up and get a little bit less pliable. The beans that it's putting out are starting to get a little bit deformed. So I have let several pods just start drying off in here and basically the same thing as the lima beans we let them get completely dried and brown and once they are good and hollow sounding we'll pull them off and save the beans inside for next year there were a few this morning as i was picking that i noticed that are probably ready to save for seed yeah, there's one oh these gnats they're terrible. So here we go, we've got several pods that are good and dried up here. You can tell these are good and ready. Listen to their dried out sound. I'm just going to pop them open like a little zipper. And on the inside, we find our dried out beans that are ready for putting in our seed bank for next year. These beans are so pretty and they're so tasty. I'm super excited to share with you guys that I hit my goal of 50 quarts of green beans putting up in my pantry for this upcoming year. So that was a huge accomplishment for me. I wasn't sure if I was gonna make it, especially during the heat of the summer and just time restraints, but these vines have done so well. They've been very prolific that I was able to can up the 50 cans of green beans and blanch and put a few freezer bags into the freezer. So that's one less thing that we have to buy from the grocery store this year. And we eat a lot of green beans. So this is a huge expense that we are saving from the grocery store and they're homegrown, which tastes so much better. Okay, to the back side of that green bean tunnel, we have more lima beans that are mirroring the other side. So we've got several that are starting to put on new pods and we have several that i have left to dry out providing us with plenty of seed for next year if we decide to do lima beans again i probably will not do bush beans again in a raised bed situation 
I think that you really need to have more of a garden plot for shelling beans because you have to grow so many to have to enjoy for more than just one meal. I would really love to have several gallons put up in the freezer to enjoy throughout the year, but growing them here in the raised bed gardens is just, they would really take up a lot of space. So if I grow shelling beans again, it will be in like a market row style garden, which is eventually what we'd like to add here on the outside of the raised beds. So I'm not sure if that will happen next year or not. We'll see. And lastly, we have our other herb bed, which you can see our dill is dying off. We've already saved some of the seed from it inside, but I'll show you guys what this looks like. So the entire plant has grown and dried out and these flowers that are at the top of the dill shoots, once they completely dry, you'll see that there are tiny little seeds at the top of them. So we have saved plenty of dill seed um, more than we will ever need, but they are great for pollinators. Like I said, they enjoy both eating the greens while they're caterpillars and coming back and enjoying the flowers once they're bigger. And because we grew so many cucumbers, we needed lots of dill, so it has served us well this year. Nothing else too super exciting in the herb bed. Now that things are slowing down as far as harvesting and preserving from the summer garden, I probably will go ahead and collect a lot of these herbs and start putting them through the dehydrator so that we can put them away to use throughout the winter months when we don't have them growing out here. But we are looking forward to the slower pace of a fall garden. If you've never grown a fall garden, it is quite different from a summer garden. Your harvesting is a lot slower. It's not something that you're coming out and collecting every single day. Think more of your leafy greens and your brassicas and your tubers those sort of things so you're really harvesting everything all at one time if you live in a warmer climate you may be able to do a second planting of tomatoes cucumbers beans that type of thing but we have had our fill and we're happy with what we got from our summer garden and we're ready to move on to the next season let's head inside and i'll show you guys how to save some more of these seeds for next year the chickens are loving this newly cleared land we had a downpour a few days ago, so there are some muddy spots throughout here where all these trees have just been pulled out. So I'm sure there's plenty of worms and grubs for our chicken friends to get out there and enjoy. Really quick, I do wanna give you guys an update on our fruit trees. Actually, January of 2020, actually, we planted these fruit trees in pots knowing that we were going to be transitioning out of our last homestead into the townhouse and building this house and property. So we went ahead and put some fruit trees in pot to save them until we were ready to plant them at our land. We were hoping to plant them this year, but the spot that we wanted to put them was not ready yet. But now that the trees are cleared, we have our little orchard plot that we want to, that we want to get going, which we'll have to wait until it cools down once again before we plant them. Um, so they're still chilling in some pots and they're doing okay. We have our nectarine tree, which actually set several fruit this year. Um, we pulled all but four of them off because it has been in a pot for two years. So it's just a lot of stress on the tree to try and fully mature several fruit on there. So we tried to cut it a little bit of a break. And then behind it, we have a plum tree. It did get some blossoms this year, but no fruit. And this plum here as well. And then we have our fig trees. These are actually two that we clipped off of a fig tree from one of our previous properties that is about six or seven years old now. So it's really exciting to be able to bring that with us to our new property. So we've got two in there and then we have another variety of fig back here that actually has a couple of little fruits on there. So I guess it's a fall bearing variety, which is pretty cool. So hopefully these are a summer bearing so we can have those staggered whenever, whenever they're actually planted and we're able to start getting lots of fruit off them. We have a persimmon tree as well that we planted over on the back side of the garage. It started getting really stressed out being in a pot for so long. We tried to fertilize it and give it a little bit of love, but um, 
it dropped all of its leaves so I'm not sure if it's going to come back next year so we're hoping that it will. But to have been in a pot for two years, those trees have done phenomenal. So we're really happy with them and we can't wait to break them out of those pots and let them really grow and set some roots here on our land. I have planted some seeds for some of our fall starts, but you guys are gonna have to come back and see exactly what we are planting in our fall garden on the next garden video. All right, so we are going to take these seeds out outside because there could be worms inside. Um, I see a few worm holes and there could be other little critters and with the amount of produce that we've been bringing into the house, we have brought some gnats in and just little different kinds of things inside. Um, and we are also currently battling fire ants inside of the house. It's been terrible. They've been getting up on my stovetop um, anytime I cook the fire ants have been coming through the wall so I don't know what that's about I can take little sugar ants little black ants but fire ants inside of my house is a no-go so I have just cut open our cucumber here and split it in half this top half of the cucumber really doesn't have many seeds to it and maybe it's just this variety. So I'm going to cut open the bottom half and hopefully find a little more seeds than that. Oh yeah, there we go. So same thing, I'm just gonna cut it right down the center. And there we have it. All of our seeds right there on the inside. So I'm gonna take the spoon and just kind of pull them out. If you can do it without taking a bunch of the flesh of the cucumber out, that would be even better because then that just saves you a little bit of a step. So I'm just gently raking them off. Now I've got my little pile here. I'm gonna put them in a fine mesh colander and give them a good rinse and just make sure that all of the cucumber flesh is off of them. And then once I've done that, I'm going to take the cucumber seed and put them on a napkin paper towel and just leave them out and let them dry. I'm probably gonna do this outside because like I said, we've had an ant problem inside and I don't wanna give them anything else to feast on inside of my house. So once these are good and dried out on this napkin, probably two or three days, just to be on the safe side, you can peel these off and stick them into your seed collection and have plenty of cucumber seed for next year. Okay, so while we're at it, I'm gonna try this enormously overgrown Punakira cucumber. As I was mentioning to you guys out in the garden, these are prized to be cucumbers that grow in extreme drought and heat and are supposed to not get bitter. But like I said, we had several bitter ones this year. We did have a period of drought a few weeks ago. Um, so I'm just curious if this one being as overgrown. The skin is almost like a cantaloupe skin, so I'm going to give it a try and see if it tastes any good. It smells okay. Not great kind of almost has a fermented flavor to it. <laughs> but it's not, um, it's not bitter, surprisingly. So maybe just because they've sat on the vine for several days drying in the hot sun, they have gotten a little bit, a little bit soured. But it's not bitter, so hey, there's that. But I'm just going to open this cucumber up and save the seeds the exact same way for next year. And that really about does it for our summer garden. I hope you guys have enjoyed my summer garden tour series. I hope you guys have learned some things. If you have not seen my previous summer garden tour videos, go back and watch them. I tried to include some little nuggets in each video beyond just the tour to kind of teach you a few things along the way. Like I said, if you are not following us on social media yet, 
find us on Facebook and Instagram at The Homemade Haven to keep up with our gardening hacks, tips and tricks, and see some of our harvest pictures as we move on throughout the season. I'm excited to share with you guys what we're gonna be planting for fall. I hope you guys will stick around for that. Let me know if you are planning on planting anything for the fall in the comments below. And until next time, we will see you guys later. Bye.